My name's Alex Wilson. I'm the convener of Friends of Palestine, Western Australia. Almost a year and a half ago, I stood on this very spot in demonstration against Operation Cast Lead that began on December 29, 2008, when several dozen Gazan policemen were massacred in their police station by an Israeli warplane. That was the foretaste of a horrific campaign of barbarism that was to come over the course of the next 23 days in which mosques, schools, universities, power stations, water treatment plants, factories and homes were destroyed in a systematic campaign of barbarism and mass murder and which resulted in 1,400 men, women and children being murdered and 13 Israeli casualties on the other side, the majority of whom were Israeli soldiers. Now, almost a year and a half later, Israel has turned its guns on non-Palestinian citizens. It has turned its guns on Turks. It has turned its guns on Spaniards. It has turned its guns on Britons. It has turned its guns on Germans. And it has turned its guns on Americans and Australians. Currently, four Australians are being held in custody they were held in custody in an Israeli detention centre in the port town of Ashdod. The latest information to hand is that they have now been transferred to a detention centre in Bathsheba. Two of those Australians are professional journalists, Kate Garrity and Paul McGough from the Sydney Morning Herald. These are high profile established mainstream journalists. They have been held in detention for almost 24 hours now under custody of the Israeli armed forces. Two of the Australian citizens, two female Australians, are also being held in Bathsheba Detention Centre. Their names have not even been released by the Israeli Armed Forces. A fifth Australian, whose name has also not been released, was shot in the leg on board the Mari Mar Mamara. The lead vessel of the three guards of Flotilla was shot in the leg. The crime they were guilty of, the reason they're being detained, the reason they may, we, may well be held in, on trial and charged with criminal charges, God knows what they'll be charged with, aiding and abetting terrorism, I suppose. The reason this gentleman who was shot in the leg, who's an Australian citizen like you and I, is because he was on board a humanitarian aid vessel that was attempting to deliver such dangerous, dangerous terrorist-related items as crayons, chocolates, 20 tonnes of paper for the school children of Gaza, water treatment facilities, wheelchairs, crutches, cement, prefabricated homes. Does that sound to you like a list of terrorist items? No. Israel has damned itself. Israel has shamed itself in the eyes of the international community. Anyone who cares to look can see what Israel is. It's plain for all to see. It's plain as the noses on our face that Israel is guilty of yet another crime of state terrorism. International piracy on the high seas. This is the most brazen act of international piracy by a sovereign state since the French Secret Service blew up the, rain the Rainbow Warrior in Auckland Harbour in 1985. As a matter of fact, it's worse than the, the Boeing bombing of the Rainbow Warrior because in that instance one person was killed and it was horrible and I don't want to downplay the, the horror of that particular incident but in this case, at least nine people have been killed. Nine people confirmed, possibly as many as 19 killed and 42 injured. And yes, let me just uh, address a very important point to preempt the criticisms from our opponents. Yes, eight of those injured are Israeli soldiers and reportedly two of those soldiers are seriously injured and currently in an Israeli hospital. Now, let's be clear about exactly what happened yesterday morning in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. A flotilla of six civilian vessels, civilian registered vessels, were sailing in international waters some 65 kilometres off the coast of Gaza. Their ships' manifests had been publicly declared. The contents of those ships had been thoroughly inspected by port authorities at the Cypriot port from which they had left on their way to Gaza. Those inspections, those manifests, contain no evidence of any kind whatsoever that weapons were on board any of the six vessels. Secondly, the lead flotilla, the Mavi Mamara, endeavoured to avoid contact with the Israeli Navy. It changed course to avoid confrontation.
confrontation and it hoped to uh, avoid confrontation at least until daylight. Then at 4.30 in the morning, Eastern Mediterranean time, dozens of Israeli commandos, including elite commandos from the Shire Ted 13 unit, repelled onto the, the, uh, repelled onto the lead vessel of the flotilla from helicopters and Zodiac inflatable vessels. The footage released by the Israeli offence force shows that, yes, there was some level of resistance by a small number of the several hundred people on board, the Mummy Mavara, the Mavara, and the footage that the IOF itself has released clearly shows that those people have got to hand whatever was to hand. Sticks. Uh, yes, they had slingshots. Okay, perhaps they had metal poles. Okay, whatever it was, let me be very clear about one point. There is no evidence whatsoever that any of the people on board that vessel had firearms and that shots were fired at the, the Israeli naval personnel. All the eyewitness reports and all the media reports that were broadcast from the lead vessel before all communication signals, all satellite signals and all electronic signals were jammed by the Israeli naval commandos. All those reports indicated that in fact the naval commanders fired first indiscriminately as soon as they scrambled on board the vessel. And there are indeed reports of people raising their hands, raising white flags. I've seen the footage myself of an uh, Arab TV reporter uh, uh, saying, and you can see the white flag in the background, saying that white flags have been raised and you can hear very clearly the sound of gunfire in the background. People were being shot at as they were raising their arms in surrender, as they were raising their white flags in surrender. All the evidence points to the fact that this was a case of mass murder and piracy on the high seas. And let me be clear about it. And I'm prepared to say this, I'm prepared to say this in a court of law. People are entitled, people have the right under long-held principles of international law to defend themselves against an act of piracy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to miss my word. I'm not going to miss my words. I don't know about how you people feel. I'm way, way beyond the point of missing my words. As I said, I was a hero a year and a half ago when men, women and children were being massacred. I'm way beyond the point of missing my words. I no longer will tolerate so-called impartiality and weasel words and carefully constructed statements about the crimes, the state terrorism Israel. I will no longer tolerate it. I am not endorsing violence for what I'm saying. Let me be clear about that. I am not endorsing violence. What I am saying is that people have a, law, a protected right under international law to defend themselves against piracy. When the Somali piracy was in the news several months ago and several merchant vessels were being stormed by Somali pirates off the Horn of Africa, governments throughout the world and mainstream media commentators throughout the world were recommending that merchant seamen, merchant seamen on board commercial vessels arm themselves, quite rightly I think, but arm themselves to defend themselves against pirates. Why is it okay in one instance to defend yourself against piracy, but it's not okay when it's the Israeli state that is conducting an act of piracy? Yeah.